A true understanding of the sustainability of nature begins with an appreciation for its fragility and wonder. For Alexandria Tomiko, she's a tree-hugging, traveling entrepreneur, experience coordinator with sustainability at the heart of everything she does. She's a nomadic foodie who's lived and traveled all over the world. This Texas native grew up in Costa Rica and now finds herself in Bali. She joined me this week to tell me all about her exciting and exhilarating traveling adventures and how she turned her experiences into becoming an app founder. Are you intrigued to learn more? Well, today's your lucky day because I'm Kevin McShann and let's have this conversation. Absolutely. So am I, Alex. So if you're ready, I'll take a moment to welcome you to the show. And I'm excited to talk to you all about sustainability this morning. Great to see you. And thanks so very much for being here. Thank you so much. So, uh, Alex, I know that you say you're, you're very uh, super passionate about uh, sustainability. And it's becoming a term that you think is sort of uh, getting green washed away. So I, I, I would lo love if we could start our conversation uh, by telling me why you're so uh, passionate about sustainability. Yeah, um, I was born in Texas and then grew up in Costa Rica. And Costa Rica is one of the, I'd say top five to not insult anybody, top five in sustainability and conservation. So it was something that I just in school and there's so much biodiversity in nature in Costa Rica that you kind of just grow to really appreciate it growing up as a child right like I grew up with coffee fields and forests and animals and like these rare animals that other people haven't had the um the opportunity to see and grow up with and so for me it was like very normal and just with that comes the Kind of responsibility to conserve and protect it and i think sustainability is the best avenue to do that and i know that you're currently located overseas in bali so i'm i'm curious what sort of uh sustainability tips and tricks have you uh, picked up overseas that we might not uh, see here in north america um so i'll refer to costa rica's best sustainability to tips and tricks. Um, I've noticed in Bali, unfortunately, even though and similar to that whole green washing thing that we were talking about before, um, Bali itself is not super sustainable. And Indonesia as a country is not super sustainable. And that's not one of their main or core values. They are, I will say, like making bigger strides towards it. But there's still you see a lot of contamination, a lot of trash, a lot of burning of trash. Um, since it's an archipelago, there's a bunch of islands and a lot of the trash ends up there. So they don't really have that future thinking. Um, in Costa Rica, the way and the tips that we've seen is there's a lot of conservation projects, a lot of the land is protected, um, whether through a national park, a private park or a wildlife preserve. Um, no plastic. I think they were one of the first countries to ban plastic. And then a lot of their energy is clean energy. So about 99% of uh, Costa Rica's energy sources is made from renewable or clean energy. So either air, solar, water energy. And I, I know that you've uh, decided to uh, put your feet into the so let, let's develop an app game when you want to sort of uh, bridge the gap between planners and 
venue. So I'm wondering if you could tell me why you decided to develop this app and how's it going for you? I've been an event planner for over 15 years now. It's been my long, lifelong career. Um, and I realized that there was a disconnect currently in the market and it was about around sourcing venues, right? So event planners, we move larger groups of people versus just one or two people or like a family looking for a place to stay. Um, so when we're talking about 30 plus rooms that we need to book, we require different information. And that's not always, and actually it's, it's rarely um, readily available on hotels websites or on other of these bigger booking sites because they focus on B2C, so more, you know, business to client, those one-offs. So I kind of started to develop for my own blog a list of hotels in Bali that I could use with my next clients that were kind of interested in, you know, creating events and incentive trips and, um, you know, retreats over here. And slowly but surely, it was kind of like I had a couple of those like right conversations and it was kind of like, oh, you could create an app. And I was like, oh, OK, cool. So I started down the path of no code and we're very close to launching. I mean, I say that a lot, but we're very close to launching this time. So now we almost have an app. <laughs> Well, I want to uh, commend you and wish you all the best with that app. But I know uh, you mentioned earlier about your ties to Costa Rica uh, and growing up there. And uh, you say it allowed you and your friends to become one with nature. So I'd lo love if you could tell me more about that. Sure. Um, yeah, like I said a little bit growing up, um, with all of the nature around. I remember I was uh, a director and coordinator of exchange groups. So actually at one time I helped um, students from the US come to Costa Rica. They were learning Spanish in a fully immersive program. And so I was no longer, I was not only their coordinator but I also was kind of like their guide on the weekends and we would take them on trips. And I remember we were in the ocean and one of my students was just in such awe of sea urchins. And I was like, oh yeah, it's just a sea urchin. And they kept on walking and they're like, no, no, we don't have these. Like they were so intrigued. And I was like, wow, we have so much biodiversity in nature. So I really grew an appreciation. Um, and then also in school, I studied hospitality and it was really woven into our curriculum, right? Like the impact that we have as planners, as hoteliers, as people who are in charge of the tourism industry, how important it is to sustain, appreciate, and protect the nature that's around us. Because not only do we know that it gives us life, um, it also can give us entertainment um, and other things, right? So it was kind of th through all alleys, right? My, my dad's a vet, so I have a huge appreciation for animals and they need a place to live. Um, and yeah, I think anyone who doesn't like nature needs to just go sit under a tree for a little bit and they'll come back with a renewed appreciation. I tell you, uh, appreciating nature is a great way for a stress, stress reliever for myself. So I, I can agree with that. You know, the sounds of the birds often wake me up in the morning. So I can certainly agree with that. When when I hear, hear the birds, I don't need an alarm clock. So I agree with you that way too, so. I know, and it's free. So that's even better, you know? Yeah, you really it doesn't cost me any money, that. which makes me uh, even happier. Free is my favorite word in the English language for sure. So what do you think, I, I, I'm curious uh, uh, to go off the beaten path with you a little bit and ask you, what do you think uh, needs to be done for more people to appreciate nature and sustainability? I really like that question. Um, what needs to be done? I think uh, a lot of education needs to happen. So education, understanding what sustainability is and how it can benefit everybody, right? It's not just a half of the people can do it and the other half can benefit. It's kind of like, we all need to take part in this and our part and our, our responsibility in this. And then I think exposing children to nature because we're seeing now with these generations that are up and coming, how easy it is for parents to just give their child an iPad during dinner, give them you know, TV time. When I grew up, like growing up, I kind of was like, 
let to run loose as a child. And, you know, when it was dark or we heard a bell, we actually had a bell. Um, and so when the dinner bell would ring, then we would come in. But then that gave us um, the time to you know, not only feed our curiosities, but explore, climb trees and eat, you know, fresh fruit from trees and see the animals, behind, uh, you know, underneath and below us and play with them and everything that it entails. So I think it's just being surrounded by it, you start to gain an appreciation and awe because I feel like naturally we're wired and drawn to nature because it is a, a life-giving force, right? So like, you know, I say I don't trust people who don't like animals, <laughs> you know? It's like it's, it's being with animals and the love that they give and you start to appreciate and understand that they need a home too and that as humans and more conscious beings, let's say in quotes, um, it's our job to protect them and to help them. What do you think is uh, your lasting impact or the lasting impact you want to have on the nature and sustainability debate? Love that question. Great questions. Um, I have like two things. So with the app and the company that I am developing, I really want to help the industry to take a hard look at itself and see where are they actually taking strides to be sustainable and where can they improve um, and reward those who have already done the hard like work to be sustainable. And then on like a legacy for myself, I ultimately wanna build a self-sustaining boutique hotel to be kind of like an example that we can, uh, you can find a happy medium, right? We can live with nature without completely destroying her um, and while still enjoying luxury and the things that we love to do. And so that's like my future plan in like five years. I hopefully will be having a conversation about my new hotel. <laughs> well, it's always good to plan ahead and to have goals. So uh, I wish you the best of luck in attaining those. And I, I'm, I'm curious to also ask you about your travels and uh, you've lived all over the world as you had shared with me earlier. So tell me uh, what's been the most exhilarating part of your young life so far? Oh, that's not a question. Most exhilarating that I think um, it's the connections I have formed, right? That make me feel more alive, that make me feel more grateful. For everything that I have and for travel I love to travel and my favorite part of traveling is being completely vulnerable right so so many times we get in our comfort zone whether that's in business or family or friends and we kind of do the same thing over and over again yet when we travel and like if you don't know the language that's one of my favorite I love languages um having to ask for help to like be fed or go to the bathroom or find shelter, right? You're like really stripped of your basic needs and then you have to ask for help. But then in response, you get to see how humans actually rise up to that occasion and want to help you um, and how caring they can be. And then the friendships that can be formed aside from language and location. So those are kind of like, I, get, I feel exhilarated when those exchanges are happening, right? When you can have a conversation, even though you don't speak the same language, but still have a great time. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm, I'm curious to also ask you about the app and the pandemic. Certainly, uh, we seem to be around in the corner in some part of the country and some hard to the country that someone. So I'm curious to ask you if you're worried at all, all about how the pandemic will uh, influence the, the launch of the app. I think we're actually timed really well. Um, my industry in, as hospitality and tourism itself took a very, very heavy hit. Um, and I still see on my LinkedIn and on my Facebook and messages from peers that I've had to go in a completely new direction, right? So tech for me is a completely, you know, 180 different direction as well. Um, but as we're opening and it's really like putting the policies in place for transit and travel, I think it's actually a perfect time because people are getting that travel bug, right? Everywhere in the world has been in lockdown. And so humans want to do the things that we're told not to do, 
right? So if we're told not to travel for a year, the first thing we're going to do is want to travel and book travel. Um, and then with planning, uh, especially larger events, usually you plan six, nine months, you know, sometimes a year, a year and a half in advance, depending on how international or how big the group is. So I think our launch, which is very, very soon, end of the month or beginning of this month, of next month, um, is perfectly timed for the field and the industry to stabilize a little bit more and help in that planning process as we go towards stabilization. And Alex, I'm curious, when you're not working, how do you define fun? Um, so I just came back from a diving trip. So I got into diving, living in Bali. Um, Yay, that's that sounds exciting. Amazing. It's so exciting. I got to see manta rays and a bunch of different fish. And um, it's just such a meditation to be under the water and kind of like mastery of your own mind where you know, you're 18 meters plus under the water. And there's always that thought of like, I could die down here. Um, but really it's like, okay, let's just remain calm and focus on our breath. So it's a great meditation. So I love that. I love dancing. I love eating. I don't know if that, like some people don't get that, but I love eating for fun. <laughs> I enjoy food. I'm a foodie. So that's fun for me. <laughs> what do we enjoy eating so much? Oh, cheese for sure. Like cheese is my, like, you know, that question, like if you're ever stuck on an Island and you can only eat one thing, cheese is my go-to. This is your sure. answer, huh? Mine, oh, would, my answer. mine would either be uh, pancakes or French toast. I'm a big breakfast Ooh. guy. So French toast is a great one. I feel like it's one of those like underappreciated breakfast foods. Right. You only get it at like specific, like fancy things like brunch. So you have French toast, but. Especially if there's cinnamon on it, but that's another story for another day, but that's okay. Yes. We talked about, uh, we talked earlier about your professional legacy. So I'm curious, curious to ask you about your personal legacy as a person. How do you want to leave your imprint or sort of your uh, tracks in the sand? Yeah, so I think through that, um, hotel that I want to build, my self-sustaining hotel. Um, I think that's the, the best way to come and, um, well, not only bring that to fruition, but also to offer like education behind it so others can go and do the same thing. Um, I feel a huge responsibility since, you know, a child to nature, to animals, right? Like, they don't have a voice. So I, I really enjoy helping stand up for nature and, you know, animals and giving them a voice, not only financially donating to charities, but also making an impact in helping facilitate um, conservation and making their lives better. So that's really what I would like to leave in the sand. Fantastic. And if people want to uh, get in contact with you personally, what's the best way they can do that? They can email me at info at nomadic and O M A D I C K uh, I C planning P L A N N I N G dot com, or they can check out my website, which is blackbookseries.com. Fantastic, Alex. You know, um, it's about uh, eight thirty in the morning over here, uh, over here in Windsor, and uh, I couldn't think of a better way to, way to kick off my morning than having a conversation with you overseas. Thanks for getting up early and for uh, spend, spending a few minutes with me. It's most appreciated. It, well, I'm, you're so welcome. It was such a pleasure to chat with you and, and see you this morning and hopefully it leads and bleeds into a wonderful day for you.